Rubble with Dalton Tanunaka. He rose to the rank of three-star general, married to the daughter of the country's president. There was talk then of a future presidency. But then came the riots of May 1998 and the downfall of his father-in-law Suharto. And Prabowo Subianto's world came crashing down as well. Now, returned from self-imposed exile, he believes he's the best person to run the country. But can he erase the images that connect him to dark days in Indonesia's history? Hello, I'm Dalton Tanaraka, and we are in the South Jakarta residence of presidential candidate Prabowo Subianto. Sir, thank you very much for your time thank you. and allowing us into your residence. Um, First, let's get a quick chronology of where you went after 1998 and how you got back to Indonesia. You were essentially, I guess for lack of a better word, fired by your superior, General Wiranto, who's now also running for president, as you know. Why did you leave Indonesia at that time and where did you go? Actually, I went to Jordan. Uh, I was on very good terms with, uh, at that time he was still uh, Prince Abdullah and now he's now the, the King of Jordan, King Abdullah the second. Why did you feel you had to leave? I felt uh, actually that I needed uh, space and needed some uh, sabbatical, I consider it sabbatical and I thought that I would uh, I would uh, be a fall guy for many many things, accusations, you know, because it was some sort of a succession struggle uh, after uh, Suharto uh, fell from power, and in all these uh, events, you know, in history, succession struggles uh, means that those who are perceived as contenders usually must be eliminated, e either physically or uh, Character-wise, so there was real uh, fear on your part of physical safety. I, I, I was a soldier, you know, and uh, fear is uh, everyday uh, uh, part of life, you know. But um, as a former soldier, I knew the risks were there, and uh, so it was time to leave and, and, and take a break. Uh, yes, I mean, uh, you know, uh, in. Uh, in military history, uh, when you see the odds are stacked heavily against you, it's wiser a bit to uh, withdraw from the scene and uh, that's you what know, you did. Observe what what was happening. And I read that you were forced to leave Jordan. Is that correct? And then you went to Germany and Thailand. What happened? No, 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 no. I was not forced to leave. No, no, no. But you moved. No, no, no. In fact, I, I spent only something like uh, 13, 14 months there. Then I returned to Indonesia, actually. Okay. I, uh, yes, yes. No stops in, in Germany and Thailand or just... No, just visits and... Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Now, you, you said you, you came home two years later and actually, in the last election, you, you did make a try. Uh, I don't know how long or yes, a serious I, a try I, for the presidency I, I, with I the was, Golkar Party. I was in the Golkar Party and I, I took part in their convention, but then I, I didn't make it. I went to the final round, you know, the last five. But I didn't, uh, I didn't fare well there at, at that time. So, of course, as we know, we're on to won the nomination for, for, for Gorkar. Yes. But then you supported your former military classmate, Cecilio Bambangyo Uriona, for the presidency, correct? Yes. When did your support for him end and why? Well, basically uh, around uh, one and a half years ago, actually. Because, you know, I, uh, after the election of 2004, I was elected as chairman of the Indonesian Farmers Association, our Farmers Union, you know, basically. And um, of course, I had to represent the, the interests of Indonesian farmers. And uh, I lobbied very hard on their behalf, you know, for their interests. And um, I tried to get access to President Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono. I did get some access. But uh, then uh, I don't know what happened. There was a, uh, there was a sort of some sort of cut off in the access. I couldn't couldn't get through our recommendations, and then I felt that uh, that uh, his government was not addressing the real issues of our economy, and I think that's when the decision was made. M many of my uh, supporters, many of my constituents especially the Indonesian farmers, the Indonesian uh, 
uh, fishermen association and uh, I mean they, they asked uh, they came to the conclusion that if we are not involved directly in the decision-making process of a country then we will always be marginalized and the Indonesian farmers actually have always gotten the, the raw deal throughout our history you know and that's uh, why agriculture is a big part of your platform but exactly. you were friends actually and colleagues with with uh, yes, SPY. Yes, uh, yes. why do you think he cut off access was he just I mean, was he purposely doing that, do you think? I, I don't know. I was puzzled. Maybe things like this happen in, uh, in, uh, you know, in the top uh, position. You know, what, what you call this, there, must, there, must, there would be an inner circle or some sort of bubble around. I think it happens. But as you said, you represented a lot of people, so it wasn't... I was puzzled also. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up, why Prabol says he should be president and some surprising supporters in his campaign. Let me ask you this then. Why is now the time for Prabowo Subianto to be president? Uh, I think uh, I have a clear idea of what to do. Uh, I know the problems of Indonesia. I think uh, the fact that I left the army at that time, you know, uh, and then I was forced into the real economy, you know, I had to go into business and I went into the ag agriculture business. So I, I know the agriculture business, and then uh, I was asked to represent the Indonesian farmers. So these past four years, I, I, I get I got to know very well the real uh, the real essence of the Indonesian economy and uh, our problem. And I think uh, because of my uh, hands-on experience and uh, my empirical experience, I. I think I got a better uh, understanding of uh, the real problems in the Indonesian economy. You feel closer to the people because of this. Yes, and a, a more real understanding. You know, I, I know, I know all the shenanigans of what the, you know, of what the the business people have been doing, all the scams, all the, you know, you, you have to be in the real economy to know all these uh, ways. And many of our professors, our ministers, our top leaders, you know, they they don't know this because they have not experienced this. This is what I'm telling. It's not that the people in government now are, are bad people or incompetent. It's not that. It's that, in fact, they are good people who don't know how the real world uh, operates. So know, maybe and I think the, the American experience is like that, right? You have people like, what's this guy's name? Madoff, right? <laughs> who, the financier who, yeah, who ran away with, what, $50 billion? Yep. All Ponzi those scheme. years, you know? How could he... How, how could he fool so many institutions, you know, so long? You know, this is what I'm telling about Indonesia. If it can happen in the States, it's been happening in Indonesia for all these years. So maybe so, if you stayed in the military, you wouldn't I have wouldn't this know. experience, right? I wouldn't know this. Okay. I wouldn't know this. So then, your party, Gadindra, was created to help get you elected, uh, basically, if you continued your, your role in politics. Now, you've attracted a significant variety of supporters. Um, Yeni Wahid, daughter of former President Abdurrahman Wahid, supports you. I just read Halida Hatta, daughter of Indonesia's co-founding father, Mohammed Hatta, yes. is with you. And, and, you know, actually more than interesting, several kidnap victims who you've admitted some involvement in, 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 in their cases are now helping your campaign. Now, we'll talk more about that shortly. What is the basic message of Gadindra, and are these people attracted to that message or to the man? I think uh, maybe uh, both, but uh, I think our message uh, uh, is a real message. We 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 actually uh, advocate uh, you know a more equitable uh, economic uh, strategy and economic policy. What we are saying is actually what uh, many American leaders, European leaders, have found out that this uh, unregulated free market, you know, uh, laissez-faire capitalist system uh, brings many times, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, suffering to the little people. I think this is what uh, your President Obama has uh, discovered and is uh, trying, to, uh, trying to carry out, you know, a, 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 a U-turn or a, a redirection of uh, 
government policies towards you know, so-called uh, free market or let's say fair capitalism. So, so you, this, this is what our argument is. Our argument is that uh, throughout our 63 years of independence, now it's coming on to the 64th year of independence, you know, there's no real, uh, first, there is no real accumulation of national wealth. That's what we found out. I have the figures, I have the statistics, I have all the, you know, the, the data uh, to prove this. Number two, uh, we've been trapped into a low growth, low growth trap, and it, the quality of the growth is also very, very bad. The disparity between the rich and the poor is, is uh, amazing. Uh, so what we are saying is, this present uh, system has not brought wealth to the Indonesian people. It's only brought wealth to a few Indonesians. Perhaps if you really calculate, maybe there are only 300 families in Indonesia who really enjoy uh, real wealth. The others are, are just on the margin, you know, e eking out uh, uh, an existence, you know, the vast majority of our people. So you want to and, lift and, and, everyone and, higher. Yeah, what I'm saying is this, this is very dangerous, you know. I always quote John F. Kennedy, you know. John F. Kennedy in his inaugural address, he said, if a free society cannot help the many who are poor, it cannot save the few who are rich. I'm just saying, you know, because my family, I think, is part of the 300 families on top of the pyramid in Indonesia. And we'll get to that. Right? Okay. I, I mean, look, I don't need to go into this politics. I can just go, you know. Uh, my hobby is riding horses and polo. I can just go ride horses somewhere in Argentina or something, you know. But what I'm saying is, uh, as a patriot, uh, we, we see that this cannot be sustainable. That you cannot have a few who are at the top enjoying, you know, vast wealth, and the majority of people still uh, difficult to carry out uh, the, you know, basic existence. Back to the, 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 mm -hmm. the, the question was, Mm. All these people are being attracted to this yes. message. Now, many people have said these kind of messages before. We have to help the poor. We have to do. But I, I mean, you're, maybe you're being modest. But they must be attracted to the man saying these things. Well, I I, I think so. I hope so. <laughs> but I, I I don't want to overrate uh, myself. I think that they see number one is uh, with this with our party. There's some sort of idealism. In, 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 in our party, you know. There's some, some sort of idealism. I mean, um, many of these people come from very different backgrounds. And I think they see that we are uh, some sort of a big tent that we accommodate, uh, you know. And we are also, uh, uh, we believe in, you know, uh, pluralism. How do I pronounce it? My English yeah, is no getting plural, You have said it right. Plural, 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 pluralism. Pluralism. Yeah, that's pluralism, a hard word to say. Sorry, yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> pluralism. I just came from so many hours of campaigning. No, you know, I know. Sorry, it's yeah. a tough so, trail. Um, and, you know, we, are, we, uh, we respect all races, all religions, uh, all ethnic groups. We have, you know, hundreds of ethnic groups in Indonesia. You know, and uh, I think people, say, people see that we are a big tent that uh, they can come in and they, 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 they like our message, they like our, they like our platform, they like our uh, inclusiveness, you know. And that's why you're attracting so many people. I got yeah. one more question before we take a break. Um, would you at all consider running as somebody's vice president if the top spot looked impossible for you at this time? Uh, number one, uh, I don't think the top spot looks impossible. Number two, I'm I'm bringing a program of change. That's my uh, mandate from my party and my constituents. You know, I'm not looking for a job. You know, I'm, I want to make this clear. I'm very, very happy with the quality of life I'm having now. I'm not looking for a job. You know, if I cannot uh, uh, carry out what I have uh, uh, advocated in front of many millions of Indonesians, uh, then what's the use of me accepting a job, you know? Okay, let's take a break now. Yeah. When we continue confronting the issues that define him, what was the general's role in the May 98 riots? And was he ready to topple the new Habibi government? That's next.
I'm Dalton Tananaka talking with presidential candidate Prabhu Subianto in his South Jakarta residence. Sir, let's get right to the heart of the challenge that you face in winning this election. Let's start with May 22, 1998. A book just out by another former general recalls the day when you went to see the new President Habibi. You're familiar with the, 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 the book. Was I haven't this, read the book. Okay, but you've heard what it's about. Was this a coup attempt as the book suggests when you went to see the newly installed President Habibi. <laughs> uh, if I wanted to carry out a coup, would I come alone to the presidential palace? I mean, you know, what, what, what coup data in the history of mankind is the leader of the coup coming alone to the palace? You didn't have some of your men surrounding the, the office along with the other men of, of General Guirantos? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, uh, I came to the palace, I think, with uh, two jeeps. But one is my own jeep, and one is my, my security detail, you know. And um, uh, that's number one. Number two, um, I was commanding at that time uh, 34 uh, battalions of the, our Army Strategic Reserve. And I mean, you can ask all observers or all those who were in Jakarta at that time. I mean, I think there were there were no other force that had uh, you know any chance of uh, 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 combating me if had I wanted to. So you're saying uh, if you wanted to have a coup, you would have done it. Come on, I, commanding 34 battalions, that's the equivalent of three. And, and I think. Uh, Three quarters of all the Indonesian armed forces were with me. They were all my friends, commanding air force squadrons, commanding marine, the Marine Corps, the Marine Corps commander. Do you know the Marine Corps? Our Marine Corps commander at that time, uh, from the Navy, he is now my uh, campaign director, my national campaign director. I mean, that's how close we are. We, after so many years, he's still close to me. Okay, now uh, that, at that point, you, you knew know. your military career was kind of coming to an end. You saw the signs, and you, you saw how President Habibi was, was reacting to you. No, so I came there because I was very close to Habibi at that time. And he always said, uh, you know, Prabhu, if you have anything, any doubt, or you want, to, you know, you, 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 are, you, you want to ask questions direct to me, please come to me. So I came there, actually, uh, informally, to ask him, you know, what's your decision? And they ask you to remove your pistol. That was that a you know that what is that story? You know, you know, the story you know it's it's Indonesian regulations, Indonesian army regulations. You know if you are going to meet your superior, you know a sergeant coming in to meet his company commander would open his his pistol belt. We, even without a pistol, he would open his pistol belt. That is our. That's our uh, standard operating procedure, is regulations. Because the implication was they're afraid you might use it, right? That was the... Yeah, of course, yeah, that's, yeah. that's what they're saying. I, mean, I think they, they, were, they were paranoid or you know, maybe they had hallucinations or something. <laughs> so you went there yeah. and, and why didn't you? Uh, why what? didn't you uh, take over or attempt to... Exactly, I, 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 it, never, it, never, you know, it never even occurred to me to, uh, to uh, want to take over power through unconstitutional means. I mean, and then I was educated as a, as a Democrat. I was, a, you know, I'm, I'm by conviction, you know, not by, not by circumstance or by, or by uh, uh, forced circumstance. I do believe in democracy. I believe democracy is the only system that can, uh, that can, uh, that can be used in the modern world, you know. What other system is there? You know, monarchy doesn't work, you know. Uh, oligarchies are unjust. It will result in revolution, uh, dictatorship. Uh, you know, you can't uh, you can't control 220 million people. You know, uh, 24 hours a day. You know, I mean, I d so the, the only the only viable uh, system is uh, it's my conviction. So, and I swore an oath as an officer since my youngest days, to uphold the Constitution. How can I? And that's how, what I've been teaching my soldiers. For, you know, when I was a lieutenant, captain, all throughout my career, I've been teaching my soldiers, we have to uphold the Constitution. We have to defend the Constitution. And here I am, here, you know, here had I wanted to 
carry out coup d'etat, I would be violating the constitution. I'll be violating the, the things that I've been teaching my soldiers, you know. I was concerned that whatever happened, uh, the Indonesian army number one must not, uh, not, must not uh, be split. Uh, that, that's my conviction because I, I believe in the Indonesian armed forces is an institution that can hold the country together in times of crisis. And uh, our history has, uh, I think, proven that. Did they give you the two weeks? No. He said, no, I want you to step down today. So I said, well, if that's your decision, sir, I'll carry it out. And I stepped down without, you know, without any uh, resistance, without any dissenting speech. I just uh, went back to the army chief. I said, okay, sir, I've, I, I've talked to the president. I, I've verified, yes, it's his decision. He wants me to step down. Okay, uh, I'll step down. I just want one hour. Give me one hour to clear my desk. And then... Uh, so you're a good soldier when you did that? I think so. Because yeah. if you really were, as critics <laughs> say, a bad guy, you could have created a lot of problems, right? I think so. 34 battalions and, you know, come on. You, you see what happened in Pakistan? Of course. When General Musharraf was fired, you know, by uh, the Prime Minister, he took over. What happened in Thailand? General Sonti. He was fired by Thaksin and he took over. <laughs> <laughs> and many of my friends, you know, the generals from other countries who knew me, they said, Prabhu, you're a stupid guy. You should have taken over, he said. For the sake of your country and your people. Sometimes I... Sometimes I... <laughs> you think about... You, sometimes you think about, <laughs> yeah, should yeah, I have done should that? Should I have done that? When exclusive Prabhu continues, the charges of human rights abuses, were the kidnappings justified, and was alleged torture under his order? with Dalton Tanunaka. Let's go back a little bit, the kidnappings. Um, you've admitted, I've read, to involvement in the detention of activists and students in the course of yeah, your job as yeah. chief of the elite special forces, Corp Corpuses, prior to Suharto's yeah. fall. Why was that necessary? Well, you know, uh, under different administrations, different policies were, are being carried out, or were being carried out. I think uh, it happens in all countries. So uh, at that time, our um, overriding concern was stability, stability, you know, and uh, the fear was uh, if there are destabilizing, destabilizing uh, factors, we would, we could disintegrate very fast because we we are a, we are a country of so diverse elements, so many races so many religions, you know, and uh, this was in the 90s, and I think that was the overriding concern of the Suharto administration. So you pulled people in, questioned them? Did yeah, you? so the, the, basically, you know, under one administration, it could be, could be considered preventive detention, right? And uh, in one aspect, you know, actually, we did prevent, uh, bomb. some of these activists, they were, uh, they were assembling bombs, you know, so, and, and Actually, perhaps in a different circumstance, we would be heroes. I would have been gotten. I would have to got a medal or something because my soldiers. You know, we are. We 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 are, Our conscience is very clear. We prevented bombings. We considered that we prevented bombings and arson. You know, but on the other side, uh, we do. It, it's against the constitution, isn't it? Exactly. So you were talking about earlier about what, what honoring mean? the what do you I mean, mean? What do you uh, mean? illegal detention or, or no under, uh, under under that under the Suharto regime, uh, the president had extraordinary powers given by the our National People's Assembly. Okay. We, so they, you were allowed to they, do they, it. There was emergency power, but when Suharto fell, of course, a new regime was there. What was perhaps considered legal in a former administration, all of a sudden becomes illegal and I had to be eliminated from the scene you know and uh, why I think they were afraid of me you know because I think I was very uh, I had uh, strong what you would do or what you would say uh, what I would do I, w I had strong support from the combat units okay. you know I mean I was a combat officer I, I never spent time behind a desk my whole career was in the field I was on operations most of the time you know were victims so, ever tortured I don't I don't know 
I don't know. You've, some never, of them, you've never ordered the torture. I never, I never ordered the torture at all. Completely against my policy. Uh, and uh, I think they do realize that I, even I never ordered the so-called kidnapping, you know, the, the det detention. Uh, you know, but once again, uh, I had to take responsibility. That is the duty of a commander. I refused to have my soldiers or uh, my officers uh, take the fall and uh, I faced the tribunal. I answered, uh, you know, for because I think it was a political decision to, to uh, get rid of me, actually. And I, 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 I am an amateur historian, you know, I do, I do study military history, I realize, I mean, uh, that was uh, what happened. Somebody had so to take the fall. Somebody had to take a fall, somebody had to be the stick scapegoat, and, uh, well. But then I've heard but, I but then the other way, on the other side is, you know, uh, now the, these guys are fighting for me, you know. You know, they, they're, you know, I, I, I always answer to some of these, you know, foreigners or Westerners who ask, them, put this in another context. Will you, do you think somebody who came out of Abu Ghraib would ever campaign for the American government? Or somebody who got out of Guantanamo Bay would ever campaign or, you know, would ever defend or ever fight for the American government? I mean, Put it in that context. But these guys. You have two guys who. Uh, uh, three, three guys, yeah. And uh, uh, former kidnap victims or in detention, yes, yes, and now yes. they're campaigning they're with you. They're campaigning for me. Okay. They're, they're, tr they're trying to fight to make me president. You know, I mean. Because they believed what you did at the time was necessary. I mean. No, I, I think not, they they realized that I was not responsible. No. I was not the, and I think they knew that I actually maybe uh, you know I. I, in the end, I, I saved them, I think. From others. From others, yes. Coming up next, did Lieutenant General Prabol give the orders that sparked the violence against the Chinese? The violence against the Chinese in May 98. Mm. Were your forces involved at all with or without your orders? Completely no, completely no. It's, it's ridiculous, those accusations. In Indonesia, any riots, any uh, violence in the streets that involves mobs, involves mass, will turn out to be either racial or religious or ethnic. Or economic. Or economic. You know, this is, this is, uh, and you know, the, uh, for instance, the, the, the Chinese are, con are perceived as the wealthier class. The business people, the business yeah. leaders. Whereas, actually, it's not really true. We have many, many Chinese who are poor. We have many, many Chinese who are farmers. Do you know, it's ironically, I've been accused of being, you know, behind these anti-Chinese riots. But now, Gerindra, we have a lot of Chinese members. Why? Because they know we are a party of the farmers. We have a lot of Chinese farmers in our party, you know. I mean, thousands and thousands of them, you know. And um, so you did and not. We have, we have Chinese candidates. I mean, it's. Uh, you didn't stir up the, the, the violence against the Chinese to hasten the downfall of the government. <laughs> why, why would I do that? I was part of the government, I was the son in law of the president. I was a three star general at the age of 47. You know, I, 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 I just made, maybe had to wait my time to get my fourth star. What interest would it be for me to destabilize? You know, if Suharto fall, I would be gone. It's, when the Shah of Iran left, his whole family gone and all the generals supporting him were gone. In fact, there was an American, the American defense attaché at that time. Maybe he wanted to protect me or maybe he wanted to, I don't know, maybe he wanted to... Uh, frightened me, I don't know, but he said, you know, he told me, do you know, General, when the Shah of Iran fell, a lot of his generals were shot. They were brought to the wall and shot. Sir, people might be listening and say, of course, he's going to deny, or any candidate would deny any involvement in any crimes against the public because they want to win the election. Why should voters believe what you're saying? Well, 
put it the other way around. Why, why am I getting a lot of support now? Why don't you come with me on my campaign trail? You, you, can, you can check all the, the, all the correspondence. Who has been drawing the biggest crowds up to now? You know, when I take my leave from the crowds, they refuse to let me go. They say, no, go on, go on. And I said, no, I'm, I've lost my voice. Sir, can you tell us now then a name who was mainly responsible for the events of May 1998? I have uh, my uh, beliefs, my conviction, but you know, in this type of things, uh, can I prove in a court of law beyond a reasonable doubt? You know, it's difficult. So if I mention name, a name or names, you know, I can be sued. And then I can't, I, if I cannot prove beyond, beyond a reasonable doubt, it's, it's going to backfire on me. I think... Uh, I understand, but you know who did it. You know who... I have uh, strong, uh, I have strong, uh, what do you call it, beliefs. But uh, it's my belief, it's my conviction, it's my assessment. It's my analysis. Can I go to court of law and convince uh, the, the court? You know, but uh, I think you know history. In the end, will be uh, the true judge. And I think when you add everything up, you know, there will be historians and analysts who will come to uh, to uh, judgment. You know, like like I said, like I mean, what, what, what's the logic? I was part of the establishment. It's, it was in my. In my what do you call it? It was in my interest to keep everything smooth. Why should I create riots? You know, and why you know you know, and then uh, why should I create riots against the Chinese? The Chinese are the trading class. They are the business class. If if they are frightened, they will run away with all their money. Our economy will collapse. You know, and who will who will profit from a from a collapse in our economy? You know, so the logic was out there, and more important is. Uh, history is my judge that I could have taken over, nobody could have stopped me, but I did not. I stepped down without even a dissenting protest. And without firing a shot. Without firing a shot. You know, on one hand, I will, they could accuse me of burning the capital city, creating riots, and then when I was told to step down, I stepped down. <laughs> that doesn't make sense if you if you think about that. Huh? That doesn't make sense if you yeah, think about now it. Now yeah. I form a party. I'm running for president. I'm asking for a mandate, you know, for the people, because I do believe in democracy, you know. And if you believe in something, you must give an example, you know. I have to give an example that I am convinced. Even now, many people are asking me, "You are chairman of the Farmers Association." You know, uh, theoretically, you can bring what, two hundred thousand farmers to to Jakarta, three hundred thousand farmers. I'm also chairman of the Indonesian, you know, small traders association. They're in the traditional markets. You know, I mean, I can call a national strike. I can call a national strike next week. I can, maybe I can close all the markets of Indonesia down. You know, I mean, but no, I said no. I don't want to do uh, actions that are extra constitutional unless we are forced i mean you heard there are indications uh, uh, a few days ago i think it's coming out in the nation press there's indications of systematic uh, there's an attempt at systematic cheating you know and if, if this goes on in our election I think this is very, very dangerous for the future of democracy. You're talking about the situation in East Java, sir. Yeah. Last point before we take a break. You've never been brought up on any criminal charges um, uh, for any case, correct? Right. But you've been refused uh, a visa, a small housekeeping thing I want to ask you. You've been refused a visa for entry into the United States. How would you take care of that if you want, if you became president? I mean, uh, I think it's, uh, it's not my decision. Right? I mean, uh, if I'm elected by the Indonesian people, I think the, the U.S. government will have to uh, make their decision. You know, I mean, uh, I, I, I answered the same question in front of some other foreign correspondents. I said, 
You know, I can always send my vice president to the United <laughs> States. Okay. <laughs> Where do we continue? A look at the personal side of Prabowo Subianto and the influences that shaped his life. My conversation with Garinja's Prabowo Subianto continues now. Sir, let's, people want to know a little bit about the man and his personal life a little bit. And, and forgive me if I get too personal, but I want to ask you, because it was a famous and uh, you know, high-profile marriage, when and why did your marriage to Tiki Suharto end? I think it was, what, five, six years ago. Yeah, I think after, uh, after I left for Jordan, I think, yeah. You know, it was personal reasons, you know, some marriages, uh, last some marriages break down. Uh, how are you with the Suhartos today? Uh, I think better, better. Yeah, at one time, I think they, they considered me some sort of, uh, I mean, I mean, I think at one time I was accused of being a traitor to the family. I mean, I, mean, I, I read accounts where at a family meeting, somebody came up to you and like stuck a finger in your <laughs> face and yeah, yeah I'd never yeah, step yeah. foot in my house again. Was yeah, that true? Yeah. yeah, it was true actually, yes. And, but, you know, this is, uh, that's why, I, w one of the reasons why I do believe in democracy, you know, and freedom of the press, because uh, in an author authoritarian uh, system, regime, uh, you know, palace intrigues and rumors can uh, make uh, uh, perception seem real. You know, it's, there's, there are always people who are whispering, uh, you know, in the ears of the the people around the the great leader. You know, and I think that, that this is a, this is the the weakness of an authoritarian close. And that's government. what happened then, you think? I think so. Yeah. I think uh, there was, uh, you know, intrigues, and uh, so I was accused of uh, of being not loyal to. Uh, you know, President Suharto. I don't know what they expected me. And you were still married to a, a, yes, a daughter. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. So okay. maybe they expected me to, to. I don't know. I, I don't understand. Maybe they do. They did believe that I was behind, perhaps the the riots or you know trying to bring down the father-in-law. You know, because in in his, it, in yeah. the history of our monarchies, it's, it's very it's very often that. Uh, uh, the son-in-law, you know, carries out coup d'etat against the father, the king. A power in, fa in fact, there, there were, there's a, there was a, the Sultan of Banten is a famous uh, kingdom in Indonesia, very famous, very long and strong uh, uh, sultanate. The son, in fact, uh, arrested the king, and then handed the king to, to the I think it was the British or the Dutch. At the but time. you so, said earlier <laughs> you had no intention of doing that. Now. Now, you have a son, Didi, who lives abroad, I understand. Will he be involved in the campaign at all? Has he helped you? Uh, no, no, he's not too, he's not too involved, no. <laughs> he's not too interested in not politics. Not in politics, huh? No, no. Uh, sir, who is your Indonesian political role model? My Indonesian political role model? Um, so I, don't, I, I don't have one, actually. I have maybe a combination. Uh, like who? I, I think a combi combination of Sukarno and Hatta. You know the founding fathers. Of yeah, the founding fathers. One is uh, charismatic man of the people. Sukarno. Uh, Sukarno, you know, uh, relates to the to the common man, and the other is the the intellectual administrator. You know, the manager who is cool, more rational, less uh, less charismatic, perhaps, but still, uh, both are patriots. So, like the CEO, both were both were patriots. Both CEO were, and the COO, the operating officer. Yes, yeah, both both were. Both were very patriotic, you know, and both were very, uh, you know, pro poor, and because they they experienced uh, colonialism, they experienced imperialism, and they experienced the 30s, when the when the capital system collapsed, you know, in in, in the in the 1929 crash, so they saw the, the the suffering of the people at that time. So, you're using images and slogans of, of Barack Obama in some of your campaign ah, campaign but, advertising. Yeah, but, but, uh, what, but, what's the point but, of that besides tying to a winner? You know, uh, Obama is, uh, went to school in Indonesia, you know, and he, he, I think he was also, he had also an Indonesian stepfather. So many Indonesians are very proud of that fact. That you never played with him as a child. Right? <laughs> no, I don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you like his mantra and his slogan of change. That's what your, your similar, similar uh, campaign Yes, I think, I, think, I think so, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm, 
Okay. Uh, now, there was a much publicized meeting this week between you and former President Megawati Sukarnapu. Yes, yes, what was I'm that about? A, I, uh, I am on good relations with her, you know, and I, I respect her. And uh, we got any deals with her? Or? No, 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 no. We were talking about this uh, indications of uh, systematic cheating. In fact, we are very concerned. You know, we are very, very concerned. Uh, if this go, if this is not really addressed uh, very soon, uh, I don't know if we can have a free and fair election. Really, it's that yes. serious. It's very, know, very serious. You mentioned this earlier. You're a wealthy man from business investments with your brother. Um, you open yourself up when you run for office to daily attacks from, from all sides. Why do you need all this? <laughs> I think it's sense of duty to my people. Yeah. I think as an Indonesian patriot, if we see our country in difficulties, and I do see my country in, in, in a very bad state now, you know, and, and the stakes are very high. I don't want to see Indonesia break up. I think the alternative, if we don't get our act together, if we don't clean up our act if we don't uh, bring economic prosperity very fast to our people. Uh, I think the alternative is very, very, uh, you know, it's a nightmare. I mean, I, I, it's scary. You know, you, you have uh, 200 million people, uh, 100 million who are uh, poor, hungry. You know, you can see the radicals coming in, you can see demagogues, and then you can see religious strife, ethnic strife, civil war. It is scary. I, 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 I don't want this. I, I think it's my duty now to provide an alternative. I, 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 I'm giving a message of hope. I'm telling my people we are rich. It's just the, you know, the incompetence, mismanagement of our elite. If we get our act together, I'm sure we can, we can uh, you know, get back. You know, uh, and I mean, the, the Koreans don't have re natural resources. The Japanese don't have natural resources. The Taiwanese don't have natural resources. You know. We have abundance of natural resources. There's no way. There's no way we cannot get uh, you know, on our feet. Final thought, sir. Mm -hmm. There are always two sides of a story. Y you know that. What does the public need to know about you that's never told? I don't know. I think I've been the most uh, scrutinized and you know, <laughs> talked about. Uh, you know, I think one of the figures. Uh, I think uh, now it's, they're realizing that um, Exactly what you said. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not in this game. I don't consider politics a game. I don't consider my running for office. I consider it, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, noblesse oblige, the French would call it, you know. It's, it's an obligation for me. I have the capacity. Uh, I'm uh, financially independent. God has given me a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, advantages. So uh, I think uh, I have to now work for my people, if they want me to work. If not, then I'll go back to my farm, I'll go back to my horses and my goats. <laughs> Prabowo Subianto, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And that's our program. I'm Dalton Tanonaka in Jakarta. Please join us again next time.